Hey guys, Anthony for Before Diesel. We're just going to try and keep this one straight to the point. Now, a lot of you understand this and that's great because you've watched all the other videos, you've got yourself educated. This one I'm going to try and keep it, like I said, simple and straight to the point and explain the difference between these two systems. What are we talking about? PCV and EGR. Okay, so get, go get your pen and paper, okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, PCV and EGR, you really want to be ready to take some notes, maybe. I'm sure there is some people. Hey, put a comment there if you take notes. Would I take notes if you do? It'd be interesting to see if it's the same people that watch videos till the end that know everything. And I'm, I'm, I'm not joking around. I mean, if you watch all the videos till the end, you're just going to know everything I know. So what else is there to know? Anyway, <clears throat> about this, of course. We know a little bit about this and nothing about anything else, maybe. Anyway, geez, that was talking drivel, wasn't it? Now, PCV and EGR. So, PCV, positive crankcase ventilation. Positive crankcase ventilation. Maybe not so positive. Maybe we'll just call it crankcase ventilation. How's that? Does that suit everyone? Because it's not always that positive because it, maybe it's a diesel, hasn't got the same vacuum, whatever. So, <clears throat> crankcase ventilation. There you go. We'll change it a little bit. But to keep it simple, it's a general thing, right? All vehicles, whatever. PCV, then we know what we're talking about. We can just go CV. You go, then you're going to go CV, what's wrong with your CVs? Because that's constant velocity. That's why we'll call those you know, drive shafts or CV shaft boots and we'll put more to it than just CV. So, But CV could be confusing. So we're going to call it PCV still, but you know what we're talking about. PCV is where the engine is vented, right? So that it's basically... The, <clears throat> to put it simple, there's a hole at the top of the engine usually in the valve cover. Sometimes it's got a filter system on it, sometimes it doesn't. In these 1KDs, for this example, and a lot of other engines, it has got a filter system built into the valve cover that sort of tries to separate so you don't get too much oil out. The idea of it is to allow the engine to breathe, you know, through combustion. <clears throat> you get, of course, what's the engine running on? It's running on air, what's air got in it? Moisture, depending if you're in a humid area, you're probably gonna get more in the heat of combustion. It causes a bit like condensation, so it's really to get the water out. People talk about it's to get the gas, yeah, a bit of gases and whatever, anything, because it all just, you know, gets dirty and mucks things up. You wanna vent it out, right? Think of it like a shower, right? You wanna get the water out, you wanna get it dry, it's, I suppose, yeah, it's a bit like that, exhaust fan, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, so, on this engine, on the driver's side of the valve cover, you'll see a little pot, little rubber, 90 degree hose, and it goes down to the pipe, goes down to the turbo. Basically, it's connected to the intake. Doesn't matter. It's not just about this engine. We're talking about this engine because this is the main one, but it's all very similar. It gets plumbed to the intake these days. Back in the day, you know, I used to just have a pipe hanging down on the road and, you know, oil leaked everywhere because those engines had more blow by as well. These engines are quite clean. You don't, but they don't burn oil. If there was a lot of oil getting burnt, your oil level would go down and you need to top it up. And you know cars for decades now, much better quality, um, quality finish on the engine and whatever. So you just don't get, in different designs, upgrades and whatever, you just don't get that sort of blow by, especially in a newer engine if it's looked after from day dot. Um, so that's where your oil gets into the intake, right? PCV system. So we're venting. Don't worry too much about why. You can go and Google it if you want, and there's different explanations. They're pretty straightforward, you know, and some different wording and diagrams and whatever. But you're venting the engine, right? Whatever you want to call it. Just get the basics of it, right? It's venting the moisture because what happens when you mix water and oil right you get a gluggy greasy mess all white and yucky and well you don't want that you just want clean oil right so it's really important that the engine is ventilated and you don't just take the hose off and cap it you could do that you're not going to have oil in your intake then you could just take it take it off and cap it right but the it needs to breathe you're going to maybe pop some seals and stuff if you do that so i highly recommend you don't do that that was a joke in case you didn't get it i mean you can do it but it's not a joke that you'll probably pop some seals out. And that's a problem with catch cans. We're not talking about catch cans too much here, but there can be associated problems, and it's a fact that there can be because we do hear about them. They can block up and then engines pop seals and whatever. Now, the freer flowing your PCV is, the better it's going to work, and it's really important that that works well, and it's going to help keep inside your engine clean with the oil cleaning the engine, whatever, and it's, staying, it's going to help keep it all clean. So I hope you get PCV system. That's what puts the oil... And it's very light amount of oil, it's not much. You know, anyone can understand that if in 
seven litres of oil in 10,000 k's, if it's still on the full line, you've burnt hardly any oil. That's a bucket load, not a bucket load, a ton load. It's a, it's a atmosphere full of air that's gone through that engine in 10,000 k's. That's a lot of air. And what do we got? What, 20 or 30 mil of oil? Pfft, whatever, right? That is not designed to, but it helps lubricate your valves and your, it's upper end lubrication. We, we like it there. We like to leave it there. It's up to you what you want to do. You can put a catch can if you want. That's another story. There's other videos. Doesn't work out so well for people because it evens out the mix. Now, so you understand PCV, that's what puts the oil there, right? The oil's good. But it happens to also work as the glue for the EGR. Now, what's EGR? Exhaust gas recirculation. Exhaust gas, that's where they put, yeah, exactly what it says. Well, re recirculating exhaust gases, well, what they're doing, they're putting exhaust, your engine's running on exhaust gases, it's exactly that. So these engines, which, you know, we're talking, this is like 10 year old technology emissions now, or more in some cases. Um, at idle, these engines are running on standard, in their standard form, running on 50% cold filtered air from the air box and through the intercooler. The intercooler is there to make it colder because we know that works better, right? Intercooler, that's that big thing up on top there. Um, so why are we running exhaust gases, right? Because then it's all hot again, exactly. So at idle, it's 50-50, I can tell you, and it obviously changes, gets a bit complicated. We're gonna to waste too much time. We're trying to keep this one simple and to the point. So. Um, exhaust gases. What's in exhaust gases? We'll go and have a look in your tailpipe. There's all, you know, soot and whatever you want to call it, diesel particulate matter or soot or whatever you want to call it, the black stuff, the black yucky stuff, the stuff that if you breathe it in, you're at higher risk, it's going to contribute to you getting cancer, heart attack, stroke. So it is bad stuff. We can agree on that, right? It's bad stuff. That's where, we're not going to talk about DPFs too much. That's where DPFs are good, okay? Good and bad, but good. Maybe, kind of. <laughs> Another story, well, let's not go there. EGR, we're talking about EGR. So exhaust gas recirculation, putting it back into the engine, you can imagine, um, so in your tailpipe, you get a black coating, like, you know, a black spray of paint. If you run your finger in there, it's gonna get black, that sort of thing. Um, so if you add a bit of oil to it, then it acts as the glue. So some people's theory is, and I get it, totally get it, of course we all do, that removing the oil solves the problem, but it doesn't really because you've still got exhaust gases going through your engine, okay? It was never a good idea with a diesel, you know? They should have come up with something better, some sort of filter system. Funnily enough, they come up with a DPF, but we're not gonna talk about that. And we're not gonna talk about the fact you could take the exhaust gases from the clean side of the DPF and put that in the engine to cool the combustion. Wouldn't that be an idea? But we're not going there, all right? I'm sure they thought of that already. There must be a reason not to do that, a really good one. Anyway. EGR, you're putting all this dirty, filthy stuff into the intake, and then it sticks to the oil, and that's where you get your build up, right? Now, we're not here to tell you about the plate, we've told you about that. I'm not telling you whether it's legal or not, whether you should do it or not. Just tell you there's thousands of people with it, and it works. There's other information in other videos about it. Go and watch those. Now, there's been a few people talking about, you know, the whole blocking up, and we keep doing all these videos, telling you the hole's not going to block up and whatever. This has been going on for years, but it's not going to block up because there's no oil at that point. It's in the EGR system before the oil's anywhere near it. If you have it up near in an, an oily area of the intake, yes, it will block up over time, reduce the flow even more, and therefore the computer will be going, oh, no, what, hang on a minute, no, not enough, and you're going to get a light and a number, right? And I'll just touch on it. Everybody should have something to read those numbers, right? If you've got a problem, you've got an engine light, Nobody can help you until you've got a number. We're just guessing, right? And we can guess, we can guess anyway. With a number, we've got a pretty accurate guess going on from experience, depending on who you're talking to, of course. Some people can just, you know, guess not stick anything. Um, now, so with that, um, people are saying, oh, you know, a little bit, I wanted to say a little bit more about the EGR. So basically the EGR system, the exhaust gases on this engine come through a port in the head. Okay, which comes through at the front of the head and it comes out to this pipe here which is the EGR cooler. Obviously this vehicle is all fully assembled um, because there was no need to get too technical and show you in detail because we've shown you in other videos. So if you want to see more detail you've got to go and find those other videos. So the pipe comes out here, it goes into the EGR cooler heat transfer unit, right? And why have they got that there? Well, they didn't used to back in 2005 on the Hilux 0506 they just had a pipe that came out the head here, right? Same place, and it went along up to the EGR valve, and that was pretty cool because there was no risk, there was no coolant hoses, there was no big heavy box there, nice and light, 
plenty of room to get in there. Less EGR flow, so they didn't really cake up too bad either. But as emission rules are getting tighter, they need to flow the EGR more. Well, they don't need to. That's what they've chosen to do to reduce. You know, they can get rid of the EGR altogether and put add blue because that treats that's that system that replaces that system. Okay, well, I think that's definitely a better idea. I don't know if that's a foolproof idea. I think it probably is. I don't know much about it. But I'm sure there's plenty of people watching the video that know more about it than me. So feel free to put a comment about how good and reliable AdBlue is. I'm sure it's not going to, and it's not actually, that's just a brand, you know, it's whatever it's called. But anyway, um, I'm sure it's not that expensive. The smaller amount it uses, you'd rather pay a bit more than feed your engine exhaust gases for sure, right? And then you wouldn't have to worry about it. I think, that's what I think anyway. But look, EGR is what we're stuck with in Australia. I hope that sort of explains the difference of the two systems and it's where they come together is the problem. Where they come together is the other end, at the back end of this EGR cooler here that runs back to here, at the bottom where that comes up to the EGR valve, which is here, the actual valve assembly itself. At the bottom of that is obviously your intakes flowing, you know, your air from your intake, from your turbo, it's come through your intercooler, right? It goes into your intake under here, and it's flowing down into your manifold, and at that point there at the EGR valve is where those exhaust gases get let in. So it's from there onwards that cause problems with you know blockages and stuff like that so um, that's the deal hope that helps and explains a little bit more to you yeah the difference between the two systems and why the plate won't block up because it's nowhere near the oil uh, it just reduces the flow uh, if you want to not put the plate and get a full that's up to you if you want to shut it some people say that having it completely shut off uh, because these don't have a turbo wastegate right they've got the variable vein turbo thing and all that so it does vent backwards through the EGR system, so by fully blanking it doesn't allow the vehicle to do that anymore. So, you know, is that going to cause a problem? Some people say it will. I don't know about that. I, look, I'm not a turbo expert. If you need a turbo expert, talk to Procharge in Sunbury. They're the experts. They can tell you about that. Um, I've seen plenty of people with a... Set, look, what happens with a 7mm hole? Not only does it allow the system to work a little bit still, it only takes a very small amount of inert gases. And I can tell you, with the plate 7 mil hole at idle, you've still got 20% exhaust gases. 20% sounds bad, but it's not so bad. The EGR valve stays clean, it works. So it only takes a small amount of inert gases for it to work. We believe it still works. We haven't done any formal testing or whatever. And when, oh, as I said, I'm not saying that it's lead. You have to check every state, the write up on you know the EGR systems and what you can and can't do with them it's different you know it's a gray area the wording they use you know obviously shutting it off would definitely be illegal um, the plate well depends you know you'd have to argue that one out you know with the authorities in court with your lawyers and what it's just not worth it so um, the main thing is the good news is nobody's checking so if you want to do it I think you know you're going to be right you know whatever um, Let's not even go there, whatever you want. Thousands of people have done it. Um, Rob Peter to pay Paul, there you go. What does that mean? Well, if, you, if you're if running um, a system to reduce nitrogen oxide that's adding heat to cool the combustion, not to cool the engine down, I don't think there's any adverse effects. That's people who've got a whole misunderstanding you know, of what's going on. It's to cool the combustion, not to keep the engine cooler. When you're going up the biggest hill and you've got your foot to the floor, let's say, in theory, that's when your EGR valve, it's shut off, it's shut. You've got full cold air, you've got full nitrogen oxides pouring out the back. Mate, nothing's gonna happen to your engine. Well, it probably will anyway, because you're working it too hard and it's getting hot and diesels make a lot of heat. You watch your coolant temperature go up real fast and your EGTs will be going up just the same. That's why you don't really need an EG. So we're getting off topic, aren't we? Anyway, that's another topic. This was trying to explain the difference between, so anything else I can tell you about EGR? Um, I don't know, really? That's it? Jeez, did I do all right? I don't know. Anyway, guys, I'll put it up. I hope that helps. The people that are new at the game and just sort of got their Prado or starting to do research, it's hopefully going to be really helpful for them. For you guys who have been watching for a while, we appreciate your support, and I'm sure you sort of got it even more now, and hopefully you got something out of it anyway. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. More better vid videos coming your way, more informative. We're going to get better at it, trying to work out the best things to cover and what we can show you. Um, Pretty well, I think we've got it all covered. Well, not all of it, but you know, as much as you can. It's hard to put uh, 20, 30 years experience into a few videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. See ya.